Ciao ragazzi! Sono la prof. So I will try to explain i pronomi relativi to you today, va bene? So the pronomi relativi are pronouns that relate to sentences, ok? So they're not just pronouns that refer to something that's already said earlier in the text, they literally connect to sentences so you don't have to repeat things. Ok, let me get into this and see. Ok, so in English it could be whose, which, who, that, whom, ok? We have various uh, options in Italian as you can see in this box, however, Oh, I'm going to use the pointer, yay, in this box. <laughs> However, um, I'm really going to go through two with you today, the two most common. So, today we will talk about che and chi. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> che and cui. Okay, so they link one clause to another. So, you have to imagine each sentence is like a chain, and you have a chain and a chain, and then you're going to put it together, and you're going to link it. They usually refer back to something or someone that has already been mentioned, which makes sense because it's a pronoun. In English, who and that can be omitted. So you can say, oh, that's the boy I saw yesterday. So it would be, that's the boy that I saw yesterday. However, in Italian, you cannot miss it. There will be something missing in your sentences. So, in Italian, you must use them. So, here we go, che, so biggie. Now, just because you see che, not all che's are alike. So, not all che's are relative pronouns. So, if I use the verb to say, oh, he said that, blah, 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 it's just an indirect quote. If I use io penso che, tu sia intelligente, I am connecting two sentences, so the purpose of connection is always the same, but this one is for the subjunctive, okay? This one's a little different, okay? So this is the relative pronoun. Okay, here we, here we go. So it must have an antecedent, which means you have to have clearly stated in your sentence what you're talking about. I'll make sense in a minute. Usually, it comes right after the antecedent, which is what it is that you're talking about. <laughs> and it functions as subject or object. And it is invariable, which means it doesn't change. So, ka, ke, ki, ko, ku. It's always ke, va bene? So, here's a definition of antecedent, something that has already been mentioned. So, let me show you some sentences, for examples, down there. Allora, conosco il ragazzo. Il ragazzo suona il violino. So, I know the boy. The boy plays the violin. I have two sentences. I could just say, I know the boy and he plays the violin. So, you connected them, but then you have the boy and he. We really don't need to do that. So, you can just connect these and look how pretty it is now. Conosco ragazzo che suona il violino. So nice. You connected two sentences and this also works as a pronoun. So it refers to il ragazzo, which came right before, and that is your antecedent. La signora è mia zia. So the lady is my aunt, and mia zia sta entrando, and my aunt is entering. La signora che sta entrando è mia zia. See, you don't have to repeat zia twice, va bene? So here is the it's an object, and here's the subject, and you just put them together right there. It's quite brilliant, actually. <laughs> okay. And I have another example. Mi piace il balletto. Il balletto è al teatro La Scala. Mi piace il balletto che è al teatro La Scala. Now, you've seen these actually a million times. When we do definitions in class, I use these all the time. So, I feel that you will be able to pick this up really, really quickly. However, there's one tiny imperfection that I hear all the time. So, here you see I put the word è quella persona, the person that, and then we can continue the sentence. Oftentimes, when you see the word person, you say, oh, person, person, chi, chi. Well, we're not going to do that, okay? Chi is a question word or 
It is a relative pronoun, but without the antecedent. So right now, you don't have to worry about it. If I say something, so I say, uh, he is the person who, it'll be que. It's always que, whether it's a person or an object, okay? So you want to be really sure that you always have que. Okay, and I'm going to skip that one because I'm going to teach you that later. <laughs> so I guess I went ahead of myself with this slide. I'll move on. I'll move this slide for the future. <laughs> okay. Exercises we'll do in class. Cui. Cui is the other big one. Cui, not with the Q, but with the C. And it's pronounced cui. Cui. Okay. So, cui is pretty much identical to que. Okay, but it does have one thing that's different. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't need to, right? Allora. Click. It's used instead of che when there is a preposition. And I'll show you in a second. Must have an antecedent, just like che. Immediately follows the antecedent. While che can be a little wishy-washy sometimes with the location, this one, it's boom, right away. They're always attached. Va bene? And you want to be sure that when you have cui and the preposition, no articles. You won't see any articles, okay? So the articles are removed. Remember that. So la scuola in cui vado è vecchia. The school in which I go is old. So hai visto la ragazza con cui ho ballato ieri? Did you see the girl with whom I danced yesterday evening? So with whom? So whenever you have a verb that requires a preposition, so I dance with someone, I go in a place, like the school, right? You will keep that preposition. It's part of your link now. Often in English, you put the, pre you're like, oh, I've got this left over. And you, often you put it at the end of a sentence. In Italian, you put it in the middle, okay? And its link is con cui, in cui, per cui. Okay, so another one is stasera vado a vedere l'opera in cui recita. So we could say that che takes a direct object. So if you can ask the question who or what, you will have che. If instead you have an extra element for whom, with whom, in a location, from a location, then you will need your preposition. But preposition doesn't go with kit, it goes with cui. Okay, so in which, which is also when, so with time, you can say gennaio è il mese in cui nevica molto. It is the month in which it snows a lot. Okay, so you can say gennaio il mese quando nevica molto, but to use time, you can also say in cui for time. Okay, now, note on location with the preposition. So, for locations, we can use a or in, right, depending. A scuola, a casa, in biblioteca, in città, okay? They vary, and most times they're idiomatic, and you know most of those. <laughs> and, however, when you have cui, this is a bit of a freebie, so you're going to like this page. In cui works for any location, even though originally it could be a or in when you're writing your regular sentence. When you're connecting to and you have a location where something is happening, then you say in cui, or if you're going there. Va bene, quindi la scuola in cui vado si chiama Winchester. Va bene? Okay, so if you have the verbs andare e venire, you can use a or in. You can choose. However, you are always safe when you use in. So I don't know why you would use anything else. Just do in. In cui and you're good to go. Quindi la scuola in cui vado è bella. Per esempio, il cinema in cui guardo il film è nuovo. La casa in cui vivo è gialla. Right? Although you say, io vivo a casa, you can say la casa in cui vivo. Actually... It really sounds bad with a cui vivo. So just always use in and you're golden. <laughs> so here goes in. You want to remember that. Exercises. Cui is a 
bit of a, a special word, actually, because it helps us do something else. So if you remember, when we do possessives, I'll say il mio libro. So il refers to libro and mio refers to the owner, right? But now we've got the super f cool thing going on where you're also connecting. So be whose. So it'll be, for example, well, I have examples here. I'll show you. <laughs> here we go. So the student whose book you found is nice. La studentessa, il cui libro hai trovato, è simpatica. So you have to send the student is nice, right? She's sweet. And then you found her book. So whose book you found. So il, it's, you often have articles, right? When you have possessive and it matches the gender and number of the noun. And then now, cui is the one that likes company, right? You're going to pick the cui relative pronoun and there you have it. You have a relative possessive and you connected the sentences. La studentessa il cui libro hai trovato è simpatica. Another example. Lo scienziato è mio zio. Lui ha teorie interessantissime. Lo scienziato, le cui teorie sono interessantissime, è mio zio. So I have the scientist is my uncle and he has interesting theories. You could say, super fancy, the scientist whose theories are very interesting is my uncle. Nice. <laughs> okay, so really, this is it on the pronouns. Uh, we have two more, just so you know. They're chi and quello che. I don't think I'm doing them with you this year, uh, but just in case. Chi, they have no antecedent, so you don't know what they're talking about. So he, who, and this one usually goes with... Um, <laughs> uh, I can't remember the word in English. Okay, pro proverbs. Okay, so he who uh, sleeps does not catch the fish. So you have to wake up early. <laughs> and quello che ciò che refers to ideas usually and things. Okay, but really, let's not worry about this. This is the slide. If you ever have to get to it, it's here for you. Va bene? Okay, I hope this helped and have a good day. Ciao.